And the two coaches, and there's Chesterfield's top scorer. Signed in the summer, Kabongo Shimanga. That was a real statement of intent for Chesterfield that says we want to get promoted. He is the best finisher in the National League. And he's been prolific for the last four seasons. The referee is Jared Gillett as the players take the knee ahead of kickoff to warm applause from all four sides of Stamford Bridge. It will be Chesterfield to get the ball rolling. It is CFC versus CFC. The initials are the same. In fact, the first three letters of the clubs are the same. But that's where the similarities come to an end. Back in 1997, both these clubs went all the way to the semi-finals. In fact, as we've seen, Chesterfield really should have gone all the way to Wembley. They could so easily have met in the final. Since then, their paths have taken a very different trajectory. And tonight, they meet for the first time in 72 years. February 1950 was the last time they went head-to-head, -head, and Chelsea won 3-0 in a replay in this very competition. The Blues are eight-time winners of the FA Cup, most recently in 2018, and they've reached the final in four of the last five seasons. Here's hudson Adoy, who started on the left-hand side. He's looking for Kovacic, and it's a good challenge out of play by Kerr. What are your initial thoughts about the way they're set up, Courtney? Yeah, I think it is quite interesting having Hudson Adore on his left hand side with Hall just, just backing it up. And I think early touches there for Hall. His, his debut is he's only 17 years old and he'll be absolutely buzzing to play. But just getting those first few basic touches on the ball, making sure you do the basics right will give him the world of confidence. But I think Chelsea are so fluid. Here it's Hudson Adore. He nipped in round the back of Jeff King and he's pulled it back for Kovacic. He scored that. Wonderful goal here recently against Liverpool. That one got a little block on it and takes it behind for a corner. Yeah, he couldn't quite follow up his heroics, but as I was saying, Chelsea, with the players they've got on the pitch, the formation can change at will, and a, the, 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 the depth in the squad is, is the difference between them and, and most teams. Well, Chelsea have been very decent from corners this season. Seven Premier League goals from this sort of position. That's the joint most in the Premier League. Can Chesterfield keep them at bay? First corner to be taken by the Moroccan, Ziyech. Oh, it's clever, isn't it? And Lukaku fires over. The old training ground routine almost came off. Yeah, it's very, very clever, and you can see why they score, score the way they do it, set pieces. It's a fantastic bit of movement from Lukaku. Round the back, he's just staying out the way, it almost dismissive. He doesn't want the ball then. Very, very dynamic. He just, but a player of his quality, you'd expect him to at least hit the target there. Well, he's had his issues, hasn't he, with Thomas Tuchel, but they've kissed and made up. And uh, the fact that he's had a bit of a break means that he can play three games in a week because you'd expect him to line up against Tottenham again in the second leg of the League Cup semi-final, which is coming up. But, uh, Chelsea are playing, aren't they, with three central defenders. You've got Ziyech playing as right wing-back, which we weren't expecting. And hudson Adoy is a, a left wing-back, which means that Lewis Hall is playing on the left of a three. So, Thomas Tuchel likes to mix it up. He did say in his pre-match press conference it would be a four. He was having us all on. Yeah, he's, he's making a, a fool of all of us, but maybe he's looking at the Chesterfield formation with the fact that they play a three and wanting to match them up. But as I say, Chelsea are so fluid especially going forward and you've got so many versatile players that can play in in a number of positions and get, getting those players forward and playing a three at the back just gives the wing backs that opportunity to get forward so maybe that's that's why he's looked at that formation and, and wanting to get a goal in early as well just to settle the crowd down and settle the team down the first opportunity maybe for Saidu Khan he's dispossessed and it's Christensen bringing it forward this is Saul the Spaniard on loan from Atletico whose opportunities have been rather limited this season and certainly gets an opportunity here 
did start in the week as well against Tottenham. First time clearance from Loach, bit of a nervy one. And it's uh, cleared in there by Kroll. And the Chesterfield fans enjoyed that as they play their way out of trouble very effectively. And a lot of the noise, I must say, is coming from that section of 6,000 Spyrites fans away to our left-hand side. That's hit by Shimanga, or would have been. Brought down instead by Lewis Hall, who was born in September 2004. How depressing is that? As Kovacic brings it forward, brilliant run from him. And Ziyech is in here, and Werner smashes it over the line. They're looking for a flag, but the flag stays down and Chelsea have the lead, and Timo Werner couldn't miss from there. A striker's dream, a yard out. Yeah, and it's a fantastic sweeping move from Chelsea, but initially, I think it was Weston with Chesterfield in that left-hand corner did really well, they, they got the ball out. But this run, it starts with Lewis Hall, he gives the ball to Kovacic, what a fantastic run. Finds his teammates, ZH there very well, Werner, he is onside just about, and as you say, that's a striker's dream, a yard out, he does take the touch, settles himself, and as I say, for, for Chesterfield, for me, first 10, 15 minutes, you want to try and stay in the game where you can, and it's probably, you know, their worst nightmare, and, and for Chelsea, it's best-case scenario, getting on the score sheet early, settling the nerves, and, and yeah, it's a fantastic sweeping move from Chelsea, all in all. It just sat up, didn't it, for Werner, and he uh, managed to control it with his left foot, and stuck it in, a little look over his shoulder at the referee's assistant, but the flag correctly stayed down, and he puts away his sixth goal of the season. Perfect start for the Premier League side. In front, inside six minutes. Exactly what Chesterfield and James Rowe didn't want. There's Lukaku. Up against Kroll, he's laid it off beautifully. Zs trying to poke that through, he thinks he was fouled. And it's a throw to the Blues, whose tails are up here. Very important as the Premier League side that you approach it in a professional manner. He would be hoping that uh, they might be a little off the pace, they're certainly not. Hudson Adoy gets it back from Werner Lukaku, shoots, great block in there. This could be a very long afternoon for the Spyrites if this continues from Chelsea. They're looking rampant here. Ziyech, Lukaku, he's pinning his man every time, isn't he? And that will be a free kick for that challenge on Oyaliki, the former Chelsea Academy player. Saul is booked. It's a, a rash challenge, that, and rightly so. Um, a yellow card, and it just gives Chesterfield a, a little bit of respite. And, you want to try and stay in the game as much as you can, and, and for me, the next five, ten minutes, again, are very crucial, especially when you concede early. You don't want to concede again in quick succession, but Chelsea are approaching this professionally, and, and they look very good. They're moving the ball so quickly. They're not taking Chesterfield for, for granted, and, and playing Ziyech on that right-hand side and him staying wide because of because of the wing-backs coming in, and, and that sort of made that goal, and again, they're, they're using those wide players very well, Chelsea, and, you know, if it stays like this, it's going to be a long evening for Chesterfield. Well, they had conceded just one goal in their previous four games, Chesterfield, but of course they're up against elite opposition here. And it's all about the movement of these uh, top quality players, very hard to deal with for non-league defenders. That's how they respond now. Good touch there from Kellerman. Wants to take it all the way to the byline here, and he'll take the corner of Christensen. Big roar from the away end again. Yeah, rightly so, and I think in, in terms of set pieces, when it's a, an underdog, you know, you're potentially looking at your set pieces, your corners and your free kicks as big opportunities to, to score goals, so they've got to make sure that it's a good corner in and they miss the first man with this. I will often say in this sort of situation that a set play could be the best opportunity for the... Minnow of the two, Jeff King to take the corner. And on that near post was Kellerman, it wasn't the best delivery in truth.
Only twice in the Premier League era, by the way, has a Premier League side been beaten in the FA Cup by a non-league team. That's two out of 48 occasions. It doesn't happen very often. The two sides that have done it are now back in the Football League. Luton in 2013, Lincoln in 2017. Last time Chelsea played a non-league side in this competition was 2004 under Claudio Ranieri. They went to Scarborough and won one nil. Wide by Timo Werner out to Ziesch. This is Malenza, the Frenchman. Paul will find in Callum Hudson Adoy. Paul there actually born after that Scarborough Cup tie took place incredibly. Hudson Adoy. Kovacic, Lukaku pinning his defender again. Ziesch. And parried by the goalkeeper. It nearly fell for Werner. Certainly got some power behind that, but they, they're really struggling to cope with Lukaku, aren't they? Yeah, it was Carroll there, and, and the way that Lukaku, the way he pins people, he's so strong, it's so hard to get round him, he does really well. The layoff again, and it's almost a, a carbon copy in terms of where Werner is, but luckily for Chesterfield, there's a defender there this time. But for me, that comes from the, the throw-in. I think it's a hall that's on the throw-in, and Chesterfield just don't switch on quickly enough for me. They don't pick up the players quick enough, and they're the things that you've, you've got to do to try and keep yourself in the game. Now... Kovacic this time has been penalised as we see Chelsea enjoying three quarters of the possession so far. That's not unexpected. No yellow card shown there for Kovacic, who did uh, apologise profusely. That's the captain, Gavin Gunning, who's wearing that uh, protective face mask. Again, a set play for Chesterfield, which they will hope to try and make the most of. And they've gone straight through the middle, and that uh, is certainly an opportunity. Their main man hoping to get on the end of it. He's cross with himself, isn't he? And you look at him, Schumanga, because the ball came over his shoulder. Difficult, difficult to control, but a chance. Yeah, it's a difficult angle, but for me, he's trying to bring it down and maybe control it and take another touch. I think in that instance, he's just got to go for it first time with his right foot um, over his shoulder, try and get it back across goal, but he's, he's trying to take a touch, and uh, it's Lewis Hall again. I think he started really well, and made, he's trapped Shimanga really well there, but for me, you, you can't afford to take a touch. That's got to be first time, even though it's a very difficult skill. Did score uh, an FA Cup hat-trick, uh, Shimanga, for uh, Oxford City. It was against Tranmere in the first round in 2018. He's got pedigree in this competition. Oyaliki gets the ball out wide. Shimanga waiting again, but it sails over his head. Callum hudson Adoy collecting down this left-hand side. Could be pretty pleased with the uh, start his side of made to this game. Thomas Tuchel, focus and concentration so important. Put a foot wrong so far. I think he'll be very impressed with Lewis Hall as well. I think he's. I don't think he's put a foot wrong yet in terms of uh, playing the ball forward. He's been in the right place at the right time. We saw it there with that defending from Shimanga. Um, I think it's so easy to get overawed by the occasion is as a youngster that's come all the way through the Chelsea setup. Um, so yeah, really good start in his first 15 minutes from him. Really good challenge there from King to get a throw. But it's the goal from Werner which separates the size, and here it is again. 
nicely taken. There's a foul there by Hudson Adoy. He's had his ups and downs, hasn't he? Uh, Werner arrived with the reputation of being a goal machine. It hasn't always worked out that way. But what you would say is he always gives his all for the team, doesn't he? Yeah, it's so easy, I think, for strikers when they're, when they're not scoring or, or not playing well um, to sort of hide and, and not get in front of the goal. But the, the great thing about him is he always works hard for the team. He's always trying to get himself in front of the goal. And, yeah, maybe he's not as clinical as he should be, without a doubt. But he's, he's got the fantastic right attitude and he's doing the right thing. He's got himself in front of goal. He's already got himself a, a goal today. And hopefully that's a spring for, springboard for him to go forward with more confidence. Oh, we saw some lovely skill there from uh, Lewis Hall. Suspicion of a foul there by Saul. Certainly Chesterfield thought it was, but the referee decided otherwise. He is going to stop the game, though. Because uh, down went Khan under that challenge. I think he's, he stopped it there because of a head injury and we know now all the, the protocols especially around concussion is is so important for player welfare so as soon as I think the referee realised it was a head, head injury he had to stop the game but no harm done and uh, we will continue with a drop ball Jared Gillett who this season became the first overseas Referee to be in charge of a Premier League game earlier this campaign. Saar. Hall. He's played in all six of uh, Chelsea's UEFA Youth League matches this campaign. He's tripped there by Kellerman. Certainly slotted straight in here with no fuss. Out of position as well, known as a as a box to box midfielder. So playing, you know, central as as, as a back three, it's a it's a it's a tough job. Um, but now I think he's he started the game really well. Tuchel will be very happy with him, and I think Tuchel, will, you know, looking at some of the other youngsters on the on the bench as well, Harvey Vale and, and Xavier Simmons maybe, and Charlie Webster as well, you know, 17 and 18 year olds, so I think you know, we want to be getting them on the pitch as well. Hudson Adoy, brilliant goal! A glorious curler from Callum Hudson Adoy to double Chelsea's advantage, placed to perfection. Scott Loach there, he doesn't look very happy and rightly so, it's a, it's a very good finish from Hudson Odoi, but he's got all the time in the world there. In terms of Chesterfield, they're dropping off and dropping off, but you can't give players of that quality that much time. You know, you'll see it here, it, it goes into him and they just all drop off, no one's going to engage him, no one's trying to put a challenge in or get in front of the ball and, you know, if you give players like Hudson Odoi that much time with the quality he's got, that's exactly what he'll do, he'll put it in the back of the net. Starts it well outside the post, curls it back in beautifully for his third goal of the season. And uh, Chesterfield supporters are seeing their dreams evaporate in front of their eyes because those goals are going in at the away end. You just saw the reverse angle there and that's such a clever finish from hudson Adoy because Scott Loach, he won't see that until late because Hudson Adore, he used the defender as almost a, a little bit of a shield to then wrap it round him and into that bottom corner. It was a very clever finish. Well, Chelsea fans will remember back in. 2015, they were 2 0 up here against Bradford City under Jose Mourinho. That ended up going horribly wrong. I uh, can't see anything like that happening again. They seem to be in complete control here, Chelsea. Thoroughly enjoying themselves. And playing some lovely football to boot. Kovacic back to Saar. 
Paul. Coleman pinched it, but the Hall's got it back again, and Lukaku's there to make it three. Individual errors creeping in for Chesterfield. Lewis Hall had been dispossessed, but somehow he retrieved it and laid it on the plate for Romelu Lukaku, who makes it 3-0 with his eighth goal of the season. And even at this early stage, that's Chelsea through to round four, surely. Yeah, and, and you would think so. It's You know what I like about this from Lewis Hall? He's driving, he's driving, he loses the ball, but he doesn't give up. He goes and presses it again, and that's why he wins it back. Lovely ball in, and Lukaku, someone of, of you know his quality, he doesn't miss that. But, you know, equally, even though it's potentially only Chesterfield, as, as someone might say, and it's the third round, with everything that's gone on with Chelsea and in recent weeks, he'll be so happy to get on the score sheet. But, yeah, brilliant work from Lewis Hall down that left-hand side. Well, Kellerman there thinks he's won it back, tries to play it to King, who just... I'm not sure if he loses his footing or his concentration, but, as you say, all credit to young Lewis Hall, who kept going and gets an assist on his debut. Yeah, and more than deserved. It's not just the assist, the, the rest of his performance so far, he, for me, hasn't put a foot wrong, defended really well gone for really well probably the only thing he's done wrong is, is when he lost the ball but as I say the, the attitude to go and win it back and then the presence of mind to look up and put a good ball in and with what we call the corridor of uncertainty in Lukaku he'll always be there fishing around um, looking to, to pounce on that ball and, and does what he does best put the ball in the back of the net Here's Kovacic for Chelsea, hoping to play that first time into the path of Lukaku. Jeff King, who made that error with the back pass. It's not just the first teams, by the way, who are going head-to-head -to -head today. We should give Chelsea a lot of credit because they arranged for the academy side to meet at Cobham, their training ground, earlier today. Something like 240 young players travelled down from Chesterfield all levels of uh, the youth teams met in matches at Cobham earlier. Brilliant touch, I think, that, from Chelsea. Yeah, really nice. Uh, you know, Cobham, a fantastic facility as well. So to, to make sure that the, the entirety of both clubs are involved, I think that's, that's a really nice touch from Chelsea. And well, that's where the uh, favours begin and end, because once the whistle went here, all Chelsea are interested in is getting through to round four. Those supporters determined to enjoy themselves despite the way the game is going. It's interesting, isn't it? Because they've, Chelsea have showed Chesterfield so much respect in the way that they're playing and, and the team that they've put out. But, but maybe the manager, James Rowe, would almost wish they hadn't showed them uh, that much respect because it's such a, a strong team to play against. And uh, this team would probably give most Premier League teams difficulty as well. Yeah, I think his eyebrows were most definitely raised when he saw the team sheets. And we see the likes of Lukaku, Pulisic, Werner, hudson Adoy, Ziyech, Christensen, Sal, all starting. And uh, also the likes of Jorginho, Barkley, Havertz, Loftus-Cheek on the bench. You really do need things to go for you if you're to pull off something extraordinary. Snudge that through to Kellerman, and he's trying to get it out to that left-hand side. It was a good idea, just overplayed it a bit. And this is where Chesterfield, they're, they're now going to start to grow frustrated, um, and understandably so, but you've still got to try and do the basics well. I think sometimes when you, you're trying to get back into a game, you over, want to overcompensate and, and do a little bit more, but you just to need to go back to basics. by Gavin Dunning. Headed forward by Christensen. Bit of defending here to do for Kroll. And he does it very well. Big cheer from the travelling supporters. Mass behind Scott Loach's goal there. What a following. Many of these supporters won't have been to a 
the ground like this with their club. Chesterfield in the doldrums for a long time now. But taken over by a community trust last year, they're very much on the up. And hoping to be back in the Football League next season. That's their main priority. This is just a bonus, really. Yeah, they're having a, a fantastic time at the moment in the in the National League. And there's still a lot of to take from this game. It, it won't feel like it at the moment, but in terms of the experience that this will give these players and and you know them wanting to push up and, and get back into the football league, they'll they'll get something from this eventually. But you know, don't get me wrong, tomorrow and for the next couple of weeks, they'll they'll definitely be feeling disappointed. But they'll go back, they'll do the analysis, and, and they will get experience, good experience from this to take back into their league campaign. Here's Saar finding Lewis Hall. Werner looking to spin off the back of Fraser Kerr. He'll be seeing this as an opportunity to improve his goal tally still further. Chelsea not the sort of side to stop at three and take it easy. Norwich found that out here early this season, didn't they? Chelsea wiped the floor with them. Yeah, Thomas Tuchel as well doesn't strike you as the sort of manager that will let you rest on your laurels. Um, so, yeah, of course, for big opportunities for all the forward players now. But again, they've, they've got to do the, the right things and, and do it in the right way in terms of, you know, once it gets to sometimes 4 5 nil players maybe try and do a bit too much, try and take too many players on or shooting from 30, 35 yards. But I think for, for Chelsea, they've just got to keep doing the things that they would normally do that, that's got them the three goals already. Accomplished young French defender. Christensen, the Dane. Missed the final uh, last season, didn't he? Christensen with a hamstring injury. Came on as sub in the final two seasons ago. Still waiting for an FA Cup winner's medal, though. I think that'll be a big thing on Chelsea's mind being runners up the the last couple of years that'll be you know that'll hurt them they'll always have that in the back of their mind and especially now with how they've fallen away in the Premier League this competition is a massive massive opportunity this year to come away with some silverware now that ball dealt with by Hall who was trying to slide that into the path of Kellerman to say Hall's positioning so far has been absolutely spot on. I'm sure his family are here watching on, beaming with pride. Always a huge occasion when you make your debut for a club like Chelsea in front of a full house here, regardless of the opposition. That's an adore. With Hall, you can tell he's, he's obviously technically proficient and you have to be to, to be in this Chelsea side, but as I say, playing out of position and, and the way that he defends, you can tell he's, he's football bright. Every time you know the ball's gone near him or a Chesterfield player's running at him, you can tell his positioning's very, very good. He's always ball side, goal side, and yeah, he's, he's put in a very good performance in his first 30 minutes. Jeff King is going to get booked here. He's barged hudson Adoy over with no hope of getting to the ball. Uh, the referee didn't like that challenge at all. No, that's not a, a nice challenge, and that's probably a, a frustrated challenge as well, especially when it goes at the, you know, the back of your ankles and your Achilles, especially when it's it's cold like it is today. That will sting for a while. Oh, we're ticking towards the half-hour mark here. Hudson Adoy has got past King. And this time, Kellerman and King link up to get it away. Only as far as Saul Kovacic. 
Little reverse ball for Werner. And it clatters off Kerr for a corner. Just interesting there, Hudson Adoy when he was running at King, and King now knows he's on a yellow card, and he, he just not let him skip past, but he knew he couldn't make a rash challenge, and that'll be something that'll obviously, go, going forward through the game, that King will have to be very careful of. Here comes the second Chelsea corner. Oh, Lukaku on the volley, swung a left boot. And it would have been no surprise at all if that one had nestled in the far corner. Yeah, it was close. Lovely outswinging ball as well. Again, the movement from Lukaku is absolutely brilliant. You see him there, very dynamic. Starts on the outside, comes in, and he just doesn't get the right connection on it. I think it almost uh, hits his shin. He just, if he gets a better connection on that side foot, it probably nestles in the bottom corner. Well, he's up to eight goals for the season now, Courtney. What, what sort of tally will he be looking at for the rest of the season, do you think? I think he, he wants to be looking at double figures uh, with a player of his quality and, and the players of, of quality around him as well. He gets good service. Obviously, the last few weeks or months, he's, he's been in and out the side for one reason or another. So for him, he'll want to get a consistent run and, and consistent goals. Werner, uh, Lukaku, just wide again. Well, the two of them linking up very nicely. And uh, I think he'll be disappointed with that one. Yeah, again, it's, it's actually a very similar position. He starts on the outside, the movement is very, very good, but again, just doesn't quite get the right connection on it, and I think he'll be disappointed at least not to hit the target. Well, while Courtney was talking there, you saw a shot of the Chesterfield chairman, Mike Goodwin, who uh, was chairman of the community trust that took over the club, so it was natural that he ended up becoming chairman of the football club. Man who enjoyed a long and distinguished career in local government. And he's also a qualified accountant, so he'll have a very steady hand on the tiller. He'll be well aware of what a cup tie like this can do for a, a non-league club's coffers. Nice back heel from Shimanga. Oh, crossing to the box, we haven't seen many of them from Chesterfield. In fact, Chelsea may not mind if they do look to come forward a bit because it'll leave space at the other end. Lukaku. Kovacic. Well, the give and go was on. They got the give right, not the go. Yeah, they're trying to play that nice little interplay there, but you see Hudson Odoi. I just wonder if Lukaku he could just have chipped that one to, to the back stick for Hudson Odoi, but it's, it's not a bad idea. It's just a little bit of the execution in the end to, to find Lukaku again from Kovacic. There's a lot of opportunities in this first half. Lukaku, there's no surprise. He's looking to fill his boots. The other end, opportunities limited for Chesterfield's top scorer, Shimanga. And we should say that Lukaku is not uh, Chelsea's top scorer this season. Actually, Jorginho has one more, the penalty taker. Lukaku now uh, closing in on him. Throw to be taken by King. And helped on as well. Oyeliki. Nelly went across, it was always just sailing wide, he'd have enjoyed that though, wouldn't he, the former academy player here? Yeah, without a doubt, and this is good from Chesterfield in just terms of creating a little bit of panic in that box with the long throw. I initially thought it, it might be a corner, but I just think it's the, yeah, the way he hits it, it's always swerving away from goal, but Chesterfield, if they can keep getting themselves in them positions and, and flooding people in the box, then they've They'll create an opportunity, although that might spell a counter-attack for Chelsea, as we've seen earlier. Paul. Looking to play it in for Lukaku. What a clever ball. He's got a bit to do there, Lukaku. 
Survives the handball, appeals. Dunning did really well to stick to his guns. Chesterfield fans enjoyed that. They're enjoying a little war of words with Lukaku at the moment. Yeah, I think Gunning defends really well there. We all know how strong Romelu Lukaku is, but does really well, sticks to his task and, and without fouling him as well. Christensen, what a clever pass that was as well. Ziyech. Well, it goes down with the referee, not interested in giving a free kick there. I think he tried to buy that one. He was just desperate to get the shot away, wasn't he? Ziyech. Yeah, referee having none of that there, but another ball down the side that's causing Chesterfield all sorts of problems. Whether it's Ziyech on that side or you, we've just seen it with Lukaku, it really is causing those problems in between the, the, the wing-back area with that three at the back um, for Chesterfield. If they can find the gaps, Chelsea, they, they really are causing havoc. Well, he did trip over Weston's ankle, but Weston didn't actually make a challenge, so that's why there was no free kick given. You heard Courtney mention it before the game, he uh, holds the record for the youngest ever FA Cup finalist when he came on for Millwall to replace Chelsea legend Dennis Wise in 2004 against Manchester United. Broke a, a record that has stood for over a century. Werner can't quite keep it in. He was a, well, he is a Manchester United fan as well, apparently, so what a big day for him at 17 years old, and he's had a, you know, a career playing for some of the top clubs and with Leeds and Swindon, Millwall, Scunthorpe, Gillingham. So, you know, he's a player with a, a lot of experience and he will have looked to have, have bring the experience to this game, but I think Chelsea have, have just been far too strong for Weston to, you know, to have the bigger influence that he'd have wanted to today. There's not many non-league players with an FA Cup runners-up medal, but he's got one, takes pride of place at home. Well, there are lots of pluses for Thomas Tuchel in this first half, but I think Paul's performance probably top of the list. He's looked absolutely top class. Yeah, he slotted in there. You know, you wouldn't know he, he was 17 years old. He, he looks so accomplished and. You know, hopefully, with his debut today, it's, it's the start of a, a great career for him. Werner. Well, he went to ground, Kerr, and eventually it's Alex Whittle who clears his lines. Ball again with a fine pass to Kovacic. Lukaku, Kovacic again. And it got a block for a corner. Well, it's a bit of a torrid first half, this, for Chesterfield. It really is. You've got to give Chelsea credit for the way they've approached it. Yeah, it's an onslaught again, but Kovacic, the way he gets the ball on the turn, you know, finds for Karko again. We know he's so good at that wall pass, um, but, you know, just can't find the target. Chance! Oh, Christensen! Goal! 4-0 to Chelsea. That's a rare old goal for Andreas Christensen as well. <laughs> the ball looped agonisingly over Loach and dropped into the net. They've conceded from a set play, which they'll be bitterly disappointed about. The first problem came because it was 2v1 from the short corner. And then suddenly they were hopelessly outnumbered. Yeah, as you say, they, um, they struggled to deal with the corner. And the man on the edge of the box there, no one's closing him down well enough. And then I think Loach will be disappointed with that in terms of when he parries it out, it needs to go to the side. It is unfortunate the, the way it comes out to, to Christiansen. I think he does really well with the header, actually, the way that it bounces up. But ideally, you want your keeper to be parrying out to the sides, not central back into bodies. Well, it was Lewis Hall with the strike, wasn't it? And he looked bitterly disappointed that he hadn't scored. But that's a poor attempt to the save, isn't it, from the goalkeeper of Loach's quality. 
Christensen accepts the late festive gift. Horrible scoreline for the Spyrites supporters. And we are still five minutes away from half time. Yeah, it's difficult for the for the fans, you know, for the players, for the for the manager. It's without a doubt you want to try and get into to half time now without conceding again. And you know, in the second half, unfortunately now for them it's it's about damage limitation. Uh, he was delighted with that, Christensen. Only his second ever goal for the club on his 147th appearance. That was a foul on Saar by Kellerman. couple of hairy moments there the the ball back into the keeper wasn't the best and then again just a little bit of a, a short back pass and Chelsea will just want to make sure that they they don't drop their level I've, they've, I've been so impressed with the way that they've kept their level so high over the first 40 minutes and, and they need to continue to do that until half time and, and obviously in the second half as well Ball again, oh, Hudson Adoy. Saar. Saar very nearly finding Ziyech with that pass. Breaks here for Kovacic. Little nudge for Hudson Adoy. Kovacic again. They're looking for more here, Chelsea. Ziesch. And this time it is claimed by Scott Loach, who holds on. Nice little play again there from, from Hudson Adoy, the one two with Kovacic. And what I like about Kovacic today, the, the way that he's finding the little pockets between the defence and the midfield. There again, he, you know, he's trying to get the shot off. He's had a couple of shots, but Chesterfield managed to get bodies back round the box again and, and when the shot finally does come Loach manages to hold on to it that time. Staff forward by Kellerman, cleared by Christensen. Here is Kovacic. Really nice ball for Werner. Hudson Adoy. Ziyech popping up on this left side, just trying to create a bit of an overload. Kovacic. And Saul. And this time a giveaway by Ziyech. Just to feel fans enjoyed that. I haven't had a lot to cheer, in truth. Ball beautifully done. Lukaku, Pulisic, no penalty there. No, very soft, he was never going to get that, but again, nice sweeping play from, from Chelsea from left to right, but Chesterfield did well to defend it and, and holding on to the ball now for a little bit as well. Oh, that ball played into Kellerman, nicely done by Shimanga. Once again, Paul catching the eye. Huge 
gaping spaces there. Werner looking to exploit it. Ziyech, Lukaku on his favoured left side. Finds out to Nadoi. Oh, he was looking to find the back of the net. And it's. Uh, but if that had gone behind for a corner, the officials say no. And there's some pretty panicky defending in there from Chesterfield. It's an interesting decision from Lukaku there. It's not a bad ball by any stretch, but, you know, the goal scorer that he is, the way he's running forward, striding forward, I'm just expecting him to un unleash a shot there, but decides to pass and, yeah, just, just quite interesting. Maybe, I want to say he's, he's devoid of confidence at the moment. Obviously, he's, he's, he's got a goal today, but is everything that, that's gone on recently maybe, you know, just lacking that little bit of confidence. Just the one minute of stoppage time. Maybe time for one more Chelsea attack here in this first half. First half that they have dominated from first whistle to last, really. Werner. Lukaku, whipped away by Gunning. Kovacic. Lukaku, Ziyech. And he's looked for another one. And he's not going to get it, it's half-time. Oh, what a great first half for Chelsea, and applause all around the ground because that was consummate. Four different scorers, Timo Werner with the first inside six minutes, Callum Hudson-Odoi with a fine second. B before the 20-minute mark, Romelu Lukaku helped himself to number three just a couple of minutes later. And Andreas Christensen with a looping header made it four and non-league Chesterfield have had no answer to this Chelsea domination. In truth, it could have been more. Half-time at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea 4, Chesterfield 0. So, it's a big and difficult second half coming up for Chesterfield. Lukaku has made way, by the way, it looks like Havertz will go as the central striker, we've seen that a few times this season and uh, Matteo Kovacic who was wearing the captain's armband also withdrawn with Loftus-Cheek taking his place and I know he's, he's probably going to play three games in a week and, and they're looking ahead to that EFL Cup um, the second leg but believe you me Romelu Lukaku he will not be happy to be brought off here um, in terms of already having the goal he'll want to be playing he'll want to get goals under his belt um, so, yeah, I think he'll be disappointed to, be, to come off. Well, it may not do much for the thawing relationship between Tuchel and Lukaku, that's for sure. Oh, could this be a chance? What a great stretch from Saar. Well, it looks like Shimanga might be seeing the whites of the eyes of Bettinelli there before the telescopic leg of the young French defender came out to deny him. It's initially a fantastic run, he just gets on the back shoulder of Saar and I think, as you say, his, his eyes are lighting up, he thinks this is his big chance, but then Saar just outstretches a leg and, and manages to get something on it, really good defending in the end. Well, we were just speculating, Courtney, weren't we, what James Rowe would have said to his players at half-time because... He wants them to enjoy this experience, obviously, but what you don't want is to be on the end of a real hiding. Yeah, without a doubt. They would have come, potentially expect, you know, I don't know what thoughts are in camp, but realistically they weren't going to come and, and win this game. And then especially before the game, you look at the uh, you look at the team sheet and look how strong Chelsea have gone. Um, but they wouldn't want it to have been 4-0 down. Um, and for me now, it is, it's damage limitation. Unfortunately for James Rowe, I think is, that's what he's saying in the changing rooms. And he's probably saying, look, Let's not get to double figures. Let's try and give a, a good account of ourselves in the second half. But, you know, as a player in this position, I've been there myself, it is, is very difficult to come on and, and, you know, in a game where you've got superior opposition. Just for the record, Chelsea's biggest ever FA Cup victory was 9-1 against Worksop Town in 1908. 
Havertz getting involved, trying to feed that in to Werner. And conversely, I don't know if uh, Thomas Tuchel knows that exact stat, but he'll be going out and say, look, don't rest on your laurels, it's four. We want more to, to keep going, to, to do things in the right way, to, to play in the right way, create more chances and, and get more goals. Frustrated on occasions uh, tonight. Jim Kellerman. He was on loan at Tamworth uh, earlier this season, but James Rowe recalled him in uh, the end of September. And he's certainly had his fair share of game time since coming back. It's a product of the Wolves Academy. Hudson Adoy. Ziyech, lovely first touch. Oh, brilliant from Ziyech, great save, Havertz, great block. Well, he made that all himself, didn't he, Ziyech? And I think the block from the Werner effort was made with the head of Gunning, who doesn't go down easily, by the way. He's a warrior for Chesterfield, but that was hit with some venom, wasn't it? Yeah, and, you know, he's already got that face mask on there in terms, so it's probably a cheek or a, a nose injury. I think, luckily, it sort of hits him in, in, the, in the back, in the ribs, and wins him. Um, but, yeah, th those ones are painful, but that touch was unbelievable from Ziyech, the way that he, he plays it round the corner. But, again, Lochaya, I said earlier in the game, when he parried it out century that the goalkeeper wasn't good enough, but that's better from him. It was more to the side, and, and then it gives Chelsea a more difficult opportunity on the follow-up. So, in terms of, of that goalkeeping, better from him. Chesterfield back to earth with a bump for their next games. Away to Maidenhead in the National League on the 18th of January. That, by the way, is Lawrence Maguire, Harry's younger brother. Hoping to come on in this second half. It'd be interesting now as well for Chesterfield because you probably don't want to change it, disrupt it uh, too much and disrupt it too much in the second half and, and potentially leak more goals. But equally, I think you, you know you're going to lose the game and James Rowe will probably be looking at his team and wanting to give them opportunities to come on and, and so, sort of savour this experience despite the loss. taken by Pulisic on he goes down he goes referee says play on Havertz Hudson Adoy tough call that for the referee but he chose to go with the advantage so Christensen Ziesch oh great ball Havertz hoping it would reach him it didn't Loftus cheek loses out to Weston now Oyeliki comes forward for Chesterfield he would dearly love a goal here for their traveling supporters who've been absolutely terrific for them wide it goes Oyeliki oh that was nicely done but in the end it comes to nothing warm applause from their fans away to our left I think that's important for, for Chesterfield to, as you say, try and at least get a goal back and, and, and repay the fans. But it's a nice bit of work there from Liam Mandeville as well. He, he scored last time out in the National League against Kings Lynn, got them the win there. And the way that he held on to the ball, he was calm and, and c composed. Um, and that's what, you know, Chesterfield needs to keep doing, get, get a bit of composure on the ball, try and knit a few passes together. Although, you know, we know how difficult it is against this Chelsea side. A lovely ball up to Werner. Gets the dead ball line as well, and Habits hoping to connect with his left boot. They're sliding those balls down the channels with incredible precision, aren't they? 
Yeah, and that's one of the issues when you, you play three at the back and, and play wing backs, especially when the, the wing backs get forward. If you can find that early ball down the side, down the down the outside of the uh, you know the outside centre back, it, it causes lots of problems there. And we've seen Chelsea do that at Willen, especially because of the precision of the players that they've got, the technical ability to slide them balls down the side with, with good position and, and, and very, very good um, you know, tempo on the ball. It's really hurt Chesterfield. Certainly someone who's caught the eye here today in red. Habits. And on he goes. Again, great persistence. Now off his cheek. Pulisic. Oof, well, that's a risky challenge. Has to be a penalty, surely. Miller. Calvin Miller looks at the referee, but he ran right across his path. Yeah, it's almost a, you know, sort of a, a rugby-type manoeuvre. I think he's, he's losing his footing. He knows that he can't get to the ball, and, yeah, he almost just, just dives in front. Yeah, I think <laughs> to play devil's advocate, he does lose his footing, but then he just throws his body in front of Pulisic, and, you know, without a doubt, that's a penalty. And this is what I'm saying about Chesterfield going forward. You know, getting those wing backs forward, you know, they're trying to score, they're trying to give something to the fans, but then they leave themselves wide open for the counter attack. And we know how fluid Chelsea are going forward. Well, on penalty duty is Hakim Ziyech. This to make it 5 0. Oh, Loach got a hand to it. But the ball still ends up in the net. It's a fifth different scorer on the day for Chelsea. Ziyech getting his third of the season. Yeah, no, no Jorginho on the pitch, as we know normally the, the penalty taker with that stutter run-up. Um, I don't know if Loach can do better here. It'll be interesting to, to, to see that on the pitches. I think Ziyech, he hits it well. He's got... Yeah, Loach has got to do better there. I think he, he hits it well. There's a lot of power on the ball, but it's not right in the corner. It's just unfortunate for Scott Loach. It, it goes under him. If he can get a hand to that, he can potentially save it because in, in terms of the placement of the penalty, it's quite poor from Ziyech. Well, it was a good ball from Loftus-Cheek. Pulisic. I think outside the box, that would be given as a foul every time, so it has to be a penalty. And it goes from bad to worse for the Spirites. Yeah, I think it's just the, the wrong decision there from, from Miller, because when he, he loses his footing, I know he doesn't want Pulisic to get away from him, but to, to dive in front of him and take his legs out it, it is obviously the wrong decision, because you, you're always going to give away a penalty. Mandeville, why not have a go? Certainly worth reining in a few shots, because so far Marcus Bettinelli has had nothing to do. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we saw his name in lights there, hasn't he? But as you say, that the execution wasn't great. But in terms of when Chesterfield are getting in and around that area, why not get a few shots off and, and try and test the keeper? He's done nothing effectively for, for 55 minutes, and that's sometimes when you can catch keepers out. Mandeville with three in his last five. One of the heroes of the last round uh, with that win at Salford. He was one of the goal scorers. And... Uh, as can be said, he scored the winner on New Year's Day against Kings Lynn in that 1-0 win. Well, he won't have any days or many days like this at non-league level. When you come up against opposition like this, it's always possible you're going to get the odd thumping. And that's certainly the way this is going. And I think there's some changes coming for Chesterfield and also Chelsea by the looks it, but I just saw the Chesterfield assistants saying three minutes, I think he was talking to the subs warming up down the side, so both teams looking to make changes imminently. Yeah, that would take us to the hour mark, wouldn't it? So, makes sense. We're allowed to make five changes in the FA Cup this season over three substitution windows. Mandeville. Oh, that 
was a really good ball. Kellerman. Do well to get any sort of cross in there. And indeed he can't. Havertz again controlled that beautifully. I think Kellerman for me there needs to be a little bit more proactive. It was the same in the first half when they got a couple of crosses and he's you know the opposite winger on the other side needs to be making sure he's coming forward onto the ball and he, he's just not um, anticipating the ball well enough for me well double change here Christian Pulisic makes way and uh, a forgotten man in many ways Lewis Baker replaces him and Christensen withdrawn having got his goal in the first half there is Baker, who's 26 now. Numerous loans away from Chelsea, but still a Chelsea player. Harvey Vale is the other player coming on. The 18-year-old who we saw in the quarter-final of the League Cup against Brentford, England under-19 international. An embarrassment of riches they have in their academy, Chelsea. A real supply line of top quality talent. I think it's it's quite interesting as well since Thomas Tuchel's come in. I think you no know, more so than previous managers, and I know Frank Lampard did before him as well, looking to to bring those academy prospects through. We know a lot of them spent a lot of time on loan in recent years, but Frank Lampard and, and Thomas Tuchel looking to bring them into the, the first team fold. Baker has enjoyed success with Chelsea in the FA Youth Cup. Now getting a, a run out in the FA Cup. Loftus cheek. Change as well for Chesterfield with uh, the captain gunning going off and Jamie Grimes coming on in his place 31 year old centre back who played in the FA Trophy final for Hereford last year what a time to come on when you're 5-0 down as a defender as well it's, um, it's going to be a tough last half an hour for him I'm sure he'll be Happy to get on the pitch in, in front of this many fans as it's a it's a big occasion, but it's still a, a difficult situation to step into. It's just a second ever appearance in the first team for Lewis Baker. His first also came in the FA Cup. And he made his debut. Time ago now, uh, actually, for Chelsea, 2014, eight years ago. Came on with just three minutes left against Derby at Pride Park. I think we can see now those changes from both sides as he's just took the tempo out of the of the game for a, a little bit. Chelsea were, were free-flowing going forward uh, prior to that, and I think as well the changes that Chesterfield have made, it's, it's just going a little bit more defensive, making sure that you know, it doesn't get to double figures, that they don't get embarrassed too badly. Well, it's not always easy to maintain uh, intensity either when you are leading so handsomely but there's almost half an hour still to play here Chelsea do want to get their foot on the gas there's more there for them I'm sure and Thomas Tuchel being the man he is he'll want to keep a clean sheet as well Kellerman No foul. Abbott's through the middle. 
The substitute for Rhymes, who gets it away, but doesn't get it out of play. Ziesch. Havertz. Oh, brilliant block there from uh, Grimes, who's just come on. Werner. Havertz thought he might have scored there, you know. That was arrowing towards the top corner, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, a very good finish you know or it would have been if, if if Grimes didn't get in the way you can see exactly what he's trying to do he's just trying to curl it into that top left hand corner um, and I think it was was definitely goal bound but for me you see Ziyech closing that ball down he doesn't just let it run out for a throw he's, he's sprinting to keep the ball in and, and that's where you can see Chelsea's professionalism and, and that you know they're not five nil up and thinking no we'll just rest on the laurels they want to get more goals and, and that's really professional from them well they haven't stopped singing and clapping and cheering and supporting their team. For many, a first visit here it may well be a last supporting Chesterfield, you never know. Determined to make the most of every moment. Baker. Vale. Pass by Hall. Just one defeat in the last 22 for Chelsea in all competitions. I think we can safely say 23 now. Uh, lost the lead at the top of the Premier League. They're in very good form. They've dropped points in games where they really should have won comfortably. Chances missed. That's a foul. Frustration again for Kellerman. Yeah, I think out of, of all the, the Chesterfield team in terms of his body language, he is cut such a frustrated figure um, you know and understandably so that you know the Chesterfield players are, are probably looking at the at the clock in at Stamford Bridge and thinking can't believe we've probably got another 25 minutes to play but they've just got to you know try and keep themselves in the game and, and try and get everything they can from this experience more changes the Dutchman at the quasi Asante coming on here for Chesterfield and Ross Barkley for Chelsea and going off for the Spyrites. Ross Barkley coming on for Hudson Adoy. Will be the end of the subs, I think. A look at his goal, Corney. Yeah, the way that he, he cuts in and, as I say, just uses the defender, the body as a wall, is it's a fantastic finish. And I think all round he's had a, a really good performance. He's been lively, skillful on the ball, trying to get past players. Um, and the way that's brought other people into play, I think he's, he's, he's had a really good 65 minutes and he, he should be happy with his performance. Well, there's been some suggestion that Ross Barkley might move on in this transfer window. That remains to be seen, but he gets a run out here. Parsi Asante on for Chesterfield, only returned on the 28th of December after nine months out with an ACL injury. So he's just happy to be playing. Yeah, big moment for him. ACL injuries are obviously one of, of the worst that a, a footballer can get. Nine months is a, a long time, so I'm sure, you know, 5-0, it's, it's a big scoreline to, to come on to and it's difficult, but equally, as you say, I think he'll just be so happy to be on the pitch and obviously playing against Premier League side, it's a big moment for him. He was uh, James Rowe's first signing. As Chesterfield manager, they were together at uh, Gloucester City. So he knew what he was getting. Baker. 
Oh, a nice touch to Loftus Cheek. First touch for Barkley. Oh, not a bad second one, was it? And the goalkeeper left rooted to the spot. I don't think that was far away. I think you can tell by his reaction and the goalkeeper that wasn't far away at all. That second touch there wasn't great, but then the third touch to bring it back round and, and the fourth touch, just trying to bend that right in the top right-hand corner across, across the goalkeeper. It's a really good effort, and it's, yeah, inches away. Never been any question about his technical ability. But, uh, whether or not he has a part to play here at Chelsea under Thomas Tuchel remains to be seen. I saw him come on for his uh, surprise comeback here against Southampton when he played a key part in the winning goal for Werner. Played an absolutely fantastic pass to set that up. Really difficult evening for Scott Loach. Best remembered for his six years at Watford. Well, they can have a problem here, you know, because of that tumble. Just wonder if he'll be able to continue. They can't make any more changes, I don't think. Fraser Kerr, the player who hurt himself. Yeah, just nasty on that left ankle there. You see the way he fell and his ankle folded under, it, under him and... You know, if he's, he's sprained the ligaments there, it's, it's going to be tough to get through this last 20 or so minutes. Saar has found his teammate Baker. Don't let me cheek. Well, they've nicked it. Chesterfield, and the free kick has gone Chelsea's way here. The first foul was by Shimanga on Saar. Chesterfield wanted it the other way round. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see this one back. Yeah, he's trying to use his body, trying to do the right thing um, in terms of letting Saar come behind him, but by the way of doing that, he's, he's actually tripped Saar up first, so... But it's the right idea from Chesterfield in trying to get it into Shimanga early so he can hold it up and bring others into play. It's just a, a little bit of execution there from Shimanga. Carefree being sung around Stamford Bridge, 20 minutes to go. Cheek. Yeah, that's what the future holds for him as well. No longer can be considered a young player making his way in the game. He's had a loan at Crystal Palace, unsuccessful loan last year at Fulham, which ended in relegation. Fascinating to see what's next for him. Yeah, I think, you know, Loftus-Cheek is, is 25, a little bit younger than Ross Barkley, who's 28, and they're both players now, especially Ross Barkley, that you're reaching your prime and you want to be playing week in, week out, and, it, you know, it remains to be seen whether they'll be doing that at Chelsea, and I think especially Ross Barkley, he'll, he'll want to get out and, and get somewhere where he can be playing week in, week out, rather than playing a bit part within the team. Foul by Lewis Baker. A little swipe here. And they're the sort of challenges you make when you, you're not playing very often and, and just, just a bit of a rash challenge and, and out of game fitness as well. They do have one change left, Chesterfield. And uh, Emmanuel Oyaliki goes off to be replaced by Lawrence Maguire, who we saw warming up a little earlier. And 
We know all about one older brother, Harry. He's got another one who's actually at Ilkeston. Sister's a good player as well, is he not? Uh, Courtney is a footballing family. As they get in round the back here, and that smashes against the stanchion from Kerr, who is well forward. Yeah, he's, he's, he's done well there, and a good opportunity to get the ball in the box with it a bit more quality now that Chesterfield have done the knock-ons good, and then the run on the back shoulder. It's very intelligent run, but he just can't keep it down. You want to try and get that one back across goal, but the way it bounces, it is very difficult and, and does quite well, but he just can't find the target with it. Still waiting for an effort on target, Chesterfield. Sometimes the occasion in the FA Cup third round day can uh, be a level up. That has not been the case today. And a proper golfing class. Mandeville. No foul. Hall. Nicely done by Werner. Chesterfield now we're starting to, to press Chelsea a bit more and just be a bit more aggressive. And I think they should have been obviously doing that from the start of the game, just being on the front foot a little bit more and just making making Chelsea know that they're there and that doesn't look great from Lewis Hall. I don't know whether it's potentially a bit of cramp rather than hopefully a, a pull in the path. Well, looking to get 90 minutes for the first team for the first time. It wouldn't be a surprise if there is a bit of cramp there. He doesn't look too concerned. I think the way he's, he's covered a lot of uh, ground today. I don't know what the GPS data will be saying. That, you know, most players are wearing that now every game on their back, but he's been up and down that left-hand side. Um, so, yeah, I imagine he'll have covered a lot of ground and, and that lact lactic acid is uh, now causing a, a few problems in his calves. Still over a quarter of an hour to play, Lewis. Surely, as a 17-year-old, he'll be all right. And Chelsea just looking a bit sloppy at the back there. They have cleared their lines through Barkley. done from Ross Barkley. Got a space to move into. Oh, through for Werner and Havertz. They're looking for a flag. Chelsea want to celebrate a sixth goal, but I think he was offside. Yes, he was. It's a, a shame for Chelsea there because it's a, a really nice bit of play. Again, that ball through. It's close. I think he is just about offside. Um, not got the benefit of the VAR today. Well, VAR actually will look at that, but I think he was offside on both occasions. I think Werner was offside and Havertz was offside. But uh, no harm done. It remains at five. Hall still soldiering on. It's a, a horrible feeling when you, you get that cramp and it sets in. Every time you run, you can feel it. Once it comes, it's so hard to get rid of. Here we are only at the uh, nine Premier League grounds. I think the FA felt if it was there, it was a good idea to use it. They've shown a bit of aggression, haven't they, now, Chesterfield? They bid to get a consolation goal. Long throw. Led to their best opening in the first half. This one's gone short. 
You hear the crowd behind the goal just saying shoot. And there is an effort on target from Chesterfield from Liam Mandeville. I think Mandeville's been really bright since he's come on. You can see he's got very good technical technical ability there. The, the shot's not good enough to trouble Bettinelli, but as you say, there's a bit more aggression now from Chesterfield, throwing caution to the wind, and I suppose that's easy to do when you, you're 5-0 down, but if maybe they'd showed that bit of aggression from the start that they may be in a little bit of a different position, although I think Chelsea now, that the tempo's gone out of the game, they're probably relaxing a, a, a lot more than they were in the, in the first half. Finally had a save to make. Marcus Bettinelli on his debut. Needs to play two miles up the Fulham Road. Craven Cottage. Barkley. Diesch. Breaks for Loftus Cheek. Havertz. Oh, they've got the free kick there. Chesterfield. Foul on Whittle. I think that's quite soft. I think, again, that other sweeping move that Chelsea do go from right to left this time. Nice bit of skill, yeah, to be fair. I didn't see initially that. That hand round the neck, and yeah, that's definitely a foul from that point of view. 29 on 29. <laughs> A very rare defeat for Chesterfield this season. They'll have to take what they can from it. Shimanga wants to get the shot away here. Good save, but it must be. It is Asante. And that's the biggest roar of the evening. 6,000 Spirites going absolutely potty. What a moment for Asante, as you mentioned, his injury problems in terms of that ACL spending nine months out. And what a moment for him. And you can see him celebrating with the fans. They know that it's, you know, they're not going to go and win the game. But to take that moment, that's something that he'll remember for the rest of his life. And I initially thought Shimanga, he made the wrong decision in terms of when the ball comes down to him. I thought he could square it earlier and find his teammate, whether that be um, Asante, I think it's Mandeville who's coming up as well, but he takes the shot on and then right place at the right time. He's not going to miss that. What a tapping and what a great moment for, for Asante there. Well, if you take that in isolation, Chelsea's defensive shape was all over the place there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, was all over the place. As I say, Shimango on that first and second touch, he, he could have squared that earlier on and it would have caused Chelsea another problem, but as you say, all over the place. And I think this last five or, five or so, even ten minutes, Chelsea's level has just dropped ever so slightly. And, and you know, that's easy to do when you, you're five nil up and you've made the changes that they have. But it's a big moment for Chesterfield. Well, nine, ten months of injury hell for a quasi Asante. And what a huge moment for the Dutchman to get his first goal since coming back from that horrible injury an open goal no chance of missing and if he hadn't put it in Mandeville just behind him would have done and it's something nice to to send the Chesterfield fans with back up the M1 home with and wild scenes of celebration to make it 5-1 like I say Thomas Tuchel, I think, would be frustrated and not keeping a clean sheet. Yeah, I think that the performance in the second half has, has been nowhere near the level in the first half, and also, the, as you say, defensively, they've, they've looked shaky at times. So I think James Rowe will be pleased. As I said, it will have gone into the changing rooms at half-time, saying, look, we need to put that first half behind us and make sure we give you know, a better account of ourselves in the second half, and they've certainly done that, Chesterfield. Barkley. 
Yes. Off his cheek. Long from Baker, but too long. Chelsea got a very tough week coming up in the second leg of that League Cup semi-final at Spurs on Wednesday, then Manchester City away next Saturday. Meanwhile, Chesterfield have got uh, a problem here as well. That looks like a groin injury. But there's the man that got the consolation he certainly expended a lot of energy in the celebration and who can blame him no rightly so in in that moment and what he's been through for the last nine or ten months you know go mad go on go celebrate it enjoy it celebrate it with your fans and again i think he initially gets the flick on does really well so a nice little touch to the side from Schumanga. he gets the shot off and he gets it in with enough power to to make sure that bettinelli can't just go and collect it and then then there you go six yards out um and yeah a little late christmas present there they're the ones as a striker you love that eyes light up <laughs> no goalkeeper in the goal roll it over the line without a doubt and again forwards that you've got to be in the right place at the right time he made sure that he he carried on his run um and yeah get gets gets the little bit of luck there it falls to him and, and he can stroke it into the goal well Whittle is definitely struggling six minutes to go and I think he, he needs to be clever now as a player and managing himself you can see him you know, rubbing a little bit of deep heat into there just to keep himself going but for Chesterfield it's a long season and, and could be a big season ahead trying to get back into back into the uh, EFL so for him you know the last thing he wants to do is exert himself too much and, and get a, an even bigger injury just needs to get himself through this last five minutes now Whittle another one actually like Asante who followed the coach row from Gloucester City Final five at Stamford Bridge. Here's Vale. Loftus cheek. Wearing the armband there for Chelsea. It's a good, powerful run as well. Got it past Weston. Havertz. Barkley. Loftus cheek again. How many players Chesterfield got back there? Stop the shot coming in. Towel. Next to shoot. Chelsea fans want more goals here. Loftus cheek looking for Vale. Chipped up nicely into the arms of Scott Loach from a Chesterfield perspective. Yeah, he'll be happy just to, to have that ball in his hands. But Loftus cheek twice there. The initial run was unbelievable and then plays the ball in. Um, just can't quite get put under control by the Chelsea player but then again gets the ball on the turn it's a bit of a no-look pass he knows Vale should be making that run and another good ball forward but Vale just can't make the most of it all good work from Shimanga against Saar helped out though by Saul Malang Saar they've given it away Perhaps just a little rush of blood to the head there. <laughs> the chance to shoot from the corner of the box. Yeah, there's a bit of a wry smile there from Whittle. And Shimanga does so well. And, and you, when you just need someone to have a, a little bit of composure, he sees his name in lights. He's probably thinking, there's three minutes left. Let me have a go, see if I can make it 5 2. And you can hardly blame him. Has scored an FA Cup goal for AFC Filed in 
Barkley. Lovely grace and balance. And he finds Werner. And Werner wants to take it on. Back kill for Loftus Cheek. And again, they get it away through Curtis Weston. Chesterfield fans are enjoying this now. Whittle. He's moved further up the pitch. Mandeville. Hoping to return it to Whittle. This is so much better from Chesterfield. Being more aggressive, knitting passes together, gives it away there. It's a co-commentator's curse there. Havertz. Barkley. Great challenge on Havertz. I think it was intended for Werner, to be honest. Bit of a frenetic finish here. Stanford Bridge. I do think it's a mixture of, of Chelsea just trying to now see the game out and, and, and Chesterfield just throwing a bit of caution to the wind and it's you know it's nice for those fans to in that Chesterfield um, those fans just to, to have a bit of something to, to cheer about. Off just cheek driving forward for Chelsea. Good defending from Kroll. Habits. Barkley. Oh, the Chelsea fans saying shoot. They're probably wishing he had. Yeah, Chelsea now just aren't moving the ball quickly enough for me with enough tempo. Dilly dallying with it round the box. You even need to get a, a shot off or pass it off. And, and that was the difference in the first half, the way they moved the ball so quickly the movement was so dynamic and and they were giving Chesterfield so many problems where now Chesterfield are managing to get the time to to get behind the ball set up a good shape and and Chelsea struggling to get through ninetieth Mets in West London so yes looking for Werner almost broke for Barkley Love a sixth goal just to put an extra layer of gloss on the scoreline, but Chesterfield have been so much better this half. Yeah, for me, especially Mandeville as well. He's he's made a, a big difference to Chesterfield going forward, giving just a, that little bit of quality going forward. <laughs> one, one in the second half, isn't it? Ziyech going over here under the challenge of. Weston getting himself a free kick in stoppage time. Yeah, I think that's just a little bit of tied legs. Weston is trying to get back, make the challenge, and, and Ziyech has, has done well to get his body in front of it there and, and draw the foul. Three in the wall, Scott Loach. Fully aware of what uh, Ziyech could do from here. Is he going to go for it? Yes, he is. Loach did dive to his left, I think relieved and it was wide in the end. Yeah, just wanted to make absolutely sure, but the, the wall just about does its jobs there and it, it's got to be a right in the corner there to, to cause any problems. Well, Thomas Tuchel, a winner of the German Cup with Dortmund in 2017, a winner of the French Cup in 2020 with... PSG and the French League Cup as well that season actually. Could he add the FA Cup to his CV, I wonder? Abbott's looking to spread it out to this near side. Ziesch. Well, 1 2 with the defender. On he goes. Parried away by Loach. 
That might be the last chance of the game. I think Loach does well there again, stands up, make sure it, it doesn't get past him at his near post. It was a bit fortuitous the way that Ziyech manages to get through, but then, you know, last line of defence, Loach does his job. On his 17th FA Cup appearance, Loach. Mandeville hoping to set Chesterfield on their way. Loftus cheek getting in the way. Well, it's given Thomas Tuchel a few things to think about. Might well have a cup final already to look forward to if they can finish the job against Tottenham on Wednesday. Breaking limbs, I think, amongst the players in red. They've had to work incredibly hard, haven't they? Yeah, there'll definitely be a, a few sore bodies tomorrow, no doubt about that. There is the full-time whistle. Chelsea through to the fourth round of the FA Cup for the 24th year in a row, breaking their own record. And it was comprehensive for Thomas Tuchel's side. Chesterfield got their goal with 10 minutes to play through the Dutchman Aquasi Asante. But by then, they were already 5 0 down. Ziesch there with the fifth from the penalty spot, his third goal of the season. Earlier, the goal scorers were Werner, Hudson Adoy, Lukaku, and Christensen. Those Chesterfield supporters, in many ways, the stars of the show. They provided so much colour and atmosphere to this occasion but blue is the colour not the blue of Chesterfield but the blue of Chelsea there into the fourth round draw it's finished Chelsea 5 Chesterfield 1